out shopscope.com today where you can buy my creative packs. Right now, I have a fire pack, cloud pack, lightning pack, and a color slash LUT pack. All these packs are great and going to help you upgrade as an artist. Use my code shopscope for 15% off the entire store. What's going on YouTube? It's CalcioScoped back with another video. Today, I have a tutorial for you guys. Darius Garland poster design done in Photoshop. Let's not waste any time and get right to the video. How to retouch to get to a point where we had the mask like this. Just so that you guys are aware, I moved the masking portion on how I'm making my mask from photos at the end of the video. I just did this because I know a lot of people already know how to mask out subjects, but I still think that it's important. So check the timestamps below and I'll put the timestamp on the screen so that you guys can go to that masking section. Clear texture up and my clarity up. As a rule of thumb, you probably don't want to ever go over 30 for texture or clarity unless that's your style. It might be your style. So I'm using that D haze as well to bring just some more pop to the subject. I'll bring the contrast up. Highlights, I'd like the highlights to be a little bit more pronounced. And from there, there's not many other things I would do. I add a little bit of sharpening and then we're ready to rock out and go do our next steps. How do I use dodge and burn? I have created a new layer and then I hit shift F5 and then I just make a 50% gray layer. Now this 50% gray layer is going to be clipped and put on overlay blending mode. And just like I showed you when we were doing mask, dodge and burn does the same thing. It can bring out highlights or it can hide shadows. So I'm going to target the highlights on the subject and I'm going to brighten them up. Right? And I'm always looking for parts of the face that are already pretty bright, but they could be even brighter. So look for those parts of the face really and the body overall. So if I see a highlight, see how this part is really kind of bright, I bring it up even more. And this is the way that you do retouching. The difference between the shadows and highlights gives it more of a painterly feel. Burn, same thing as highlights. I'm finding the most prominent points that could be even more prominent in order to create a great effect on the player retouching is use select color, select highlights. So select color range, and then you're going to select the highlights from the image. So select a range. This is the range right here. See how that white is what's selected. So see how that selects way too much. You want to change it, choose a range. that's not going to select too much of the subject and fuzziness is how much of the feather it'll have. So this will be more harsh and not blended out in terms of the selection. This will have the selection more blended out and less sharp. Okay. So add a little bit of fuzziness to make those transitions smooth. Hit OK. And now it's making a selection. Go to the top, add a brightness and contrast layer, and this will be contained within the mask. Now you can bring up those highlights even more to paint some of the highlights off of the jersey. So I'm painting black on the layer mask on the jersey parts. And then do the same thing for your shadows. Select color range. And then you're going to go to your shadows I'm gonna hide the full body mask. And let's just take a look at all the little things that went on before. And I brought him onto the canvas here and I knew I wanted my background to be white. So I just added a solid fill color. So you can just add a solid fill color like here. You go here add solid fill color and I want it to be white but a little bit darker than white. Added selective color just on the whites of the of him just to make him blend in a little bit more with the white. See how you can have like pretty dark whites actually or not light white. So I just brought this black to minus to lift some of the shadows. Just added a layer, went on a white color or you can even just pick the background color. And then I just added a little bit of haze on him, dropping my flow down, add a little bit of haze to make him start kind of just blending in so at a layer mask. And then I just painted a little bit of black underneath in order to lift him up and make him fade into the background smoothly. I had a feeling that I wanted to use a border on this piece. And originally this was just a border that I added, turned the border so that it was off center and then had to increase a little bit more of the outside thickness added a displacement map, which you guys can download. I'll put this, this down there for everybody. So this goes to filter, distort, displace. You're going to convert it to smart object once you distort it. And for this one, I think I used around 25 and like 20 hit. Okay. And then I have a displacement called Calcioscope three saved. 
that I will put in the description for everybody to download the uh, lightness a little bit just to lift the black a little bit. So this grid that I'm showing you guys now that was created behind Darius Garland, this was actually made in Adobe Illustrator. What you're gonna need is the rectangular grid tool. If you don't see it, you can go to these, you can go to this ellipse if you don't see it and edit toolbar and it will be in draw. When I, when I double click this rectangular grid tool, it brings up this option. So you want this to be on zero. You want these to be even nine by nine. And then you're going to hit OK. Now, if you want this to be longer, you could just hold down Alt or Option and then drag down and that would make a duplicate. You can also control the size of the the stroke click and drag over the entire grid. Had expanded it, you can just click over once again and use your Pathfinder tool to unite these the object. Now it's as one and then you're going to hit Command C command V and bring these in as a smart object. Play around with the displacement map. Once again, Castle scope three, and this will displace the, the rectangular grid at a layer mask. Blend it out like so in the areas that you want to be a little more faded. Taking out this whole rectangle so that after the fact, I could put this cab logo in. And this cab logo was literally just a solid fill color. You can honestly use the rectangular tool with a similar color and just fill underneath. These triangles were very random. They're just random until I decided, hey, these actually fit the scene and I ended up just liking it. So I kept them with the scene. Go to the triangle tool. And when you drag at first, it's gonna be, you know, just very isosceles or inverted, or even if you hold shift, this makes a perfect triangle. The way that I like to skew my triangles is literally holding Command T and then hitting the distort button or the skew button. And that's how I distorted the triangles that you see on the canvas. I'd done a Nike displacement a while ago and I was really on that. So it's cool to get back to that. But I added the displacement once again, Calisto Scope 3, add the displacement. And then after that, I added a garnet solid fill color. Solid fill color is right down here and then just choose your color that was clipped. And then also this is called a lo-fi monitor texture added in just for you guys on the tutorial, but make sure you guys subscribe to the Patreon so that you guys get access to my project files and literally all the assets that I use. It's a great investment and it really helps me to continue creating great videos for you guys. So check it out, link below, CalcioScope Patreon. So the CCs are mainly from the shopscope.com marketplace where you guys can cop my packs today. It's a digital marketplace that's going to help you improve as a digital artist. Use the code shopscope.com and continue being great as an artist. Super pop scope LUT. So the super pop scope LUT, I put this down to 36% from the color lookups. If you don't know how to add color lookups, you go to the semicircle and the color lookup tab is right here. And then the second one that I used was the enter vibes LUT. So when you're using curves, curves pretty much works like this. This is the blacks of the subject where this first point is. If I make a point here, this is where the shadows are. If I make a point here, this is where your midpoints are. If I make a point here, this is highlights. And then the last point will be your whites. Okay. So if you ever want to bring up your shadows, just make a point right there and see how that's already bringing up your shadows. Midpoints going to adjust within the midpoints, of course. So you play around with a little bit of your midpoints and then your highlights. Highlights, I feel like were kind of maybe a bit harsh, so I, I can bring it down a little bit and then see how that's bringing my whites down automatically. So I don't really want to bring down the whites too much there. Surface shadow is the most important part. So make sure you get your surface shadows really nice. Solid fill color of black, like so. And then you're going to invert your mask. Now let's go to the brush tool right here or shortcut B. Right click, bring your brush down to like floor level. So see how this brush orientation is now hitting like floor level, drop back your hardness to zero. And since this is on a layer mask, we're just going to paint white underneath the foot like this. Contact shadow is going to be the most dark and it's going to be basically black if it's making contact with the ground and everything else from that fades out. Just switch between white and blacks by hitting X on your paintbrush tool, and you're gonna be able to add more shadow, and black is going to take away shadow. They do help out a lot, and you can always drop your flow down. And I added a little bit of shadow just for this foot right here. 
in the back. I want to show you guys on this piece is how I mask. So right now I'm on the original image of the mask. Go right into your channels path. Okay. If you don't have it, just go to windows and add that channels layer. You're going to click a channel and you want to pick the channel that has the most variance between the background and the subject. So for me, it's looking like the reds are going to have that, right? Cause look at blue. It's kind of similar to the background and there's not much difference between it. Green is probably a little bit better and you can see more of that distinction between the background and subject. But I think red really does it here, um, including the skin, hair and everything that is there. What you're going to do once you click your channel that you have first things first, you, you know, that's your channel you want to use. So make a duplicate of the backgrounds just to keep things organized. And if you ever want to go back to the original background, name it. And I'm just going to say mask. I'm going to click that red channel once again. And with this red channel, you're going to drag it down and make a copy. Now you're going to be working off of this red channel exclusively. You're going to use dodge and burn to make a difference between the subject and the background. So with the range on dodge and burn, I can target shadows. So this is your range. So I'm going to target shadows. Okay. And then I'm going to be on the burn tool, which is going to make the shadows even darker paint around the edge of my mask and just see how that is making that effect come to life. So you're painting on shadows. You're using the burn tool and you're painting around your subject. When you do this, you're going to have to take your time and try to keep most of the detail work on shadows. If you're doing the background first initially and just take your time to make a nice surrounding area around the subject. Now, once that is almost completely done, what you can do is now target your shadows, but you're going to make this a dodge layer. Okay. So you're going to start making the parts of your hair brighter. So very bright on the hair. And we're moving towards getting this, this, this mask to be white and the background to be dark or black, which is the goal. Okay. So once you get the mask to a pretty good point between the shadows or making the background black and making the highlights white or the mask white, now you're going to actually paint white on the mask. So you can use like a lasso tool. You don't have to be extremely precise, but try to be pretty precise and just go inside of the mask and you're going to create a white fill color on the inside. All right. So once you have a silhouette that looks like this and mo mainly all of your subject is in white and then the background is in black, what you can now do is you're going to go and click the red copy. So control click the red copy and then go to your layers and make a layer from what you just did. And you should have a mask that looks something like this. What I like to do when I have like these faded edges, I just like to duplicate the mask a couple times and that brings more fill to it. And then I control and merge the mask down. So I like to go in with the hair brush pack and get a little bit of that fringe out manually, clean up your mask. So you're going to have a little bit of spillage some ways and you're going to have a little bit excess on the outside, I control click the mask and I make a layer mask. And then after that, I use filter other minimum. And then I just choose my pixel radius and see how it gets rid of those fringes that were on the head.